Hi, it's February the 8th, 2021, a snowy morning in Lincolnshire. When you think of the ground crews who used to work during 1940s servicing Lancasters with layers of snow laying on top of the wings, those lads did a certainly good job. Well done to all the ground crew during that uh, 1940s time. I've received a bumper crop of video clips from Brad, all on to do with servicing of the Merlin engines on the Lancaster Just J and at East Kirby. On these clips they check and remove and replace a valve in number two engine of Just Jane. Once again, thanks for Brad for keeping us informed what's happening at East Kirby uh, through these video clips. Not a lot of restoration work going on, but more servicing. And also thank you to Martin for helping him with this video. This is Brad's video. Bye and thanks for watching. Use that. No, it's all right. Go on. So here we are, Nev. Barrel nut on number four propeller in readiness for removing it. And the propeller. And the propeller. More later. I'm going to attempt to remove this snap ring here that locks the propeller nut. Now we are going to remove the propeller oil distribution valve. Points to note when you remove yours at home, it is a left hand thread. Left hand thread. So, here is the illustrious clip as removed earlier. Handed to Mr. Bradley. And now, removal of distribution removal valve. Removal of distribution valve, remembering it's a left hand thread, so it looks like we're tightening it up. And here she comes. There will be a lot of oil because there's a very long shaft on the end of it. He's not going to be able to use any of this music. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. We've got our very own version of Stonehenge going on over here, look. Stonehenge. Some people say if you stand under the props for long enough, they become serviceable. Good day. As you can see, this engine is uh, receiving some treatment. There's a, a valve that appears to be uh, damaged possible valve seat problem, so we've stripped off all the necessary uh, external parts, you can see the exhaust stubs, header tank, etc., all removed, ready to take the bank off so we can get the valve out. Uh, hopefully, the valve seat will be retrievable and we'll be just able to put a valve in. However, if the valve seat's damaged, then the entire block has got to come off, and we're obviously ready for that at the moment. Uh, the block has to come off to do the valve in any case, it's whether or not we can refit this block after a replacement valve or whether it needs specialist repair. So uh, more of that later. Hi Nev, number four engine here. It's the automatic booth control unit. And uh, what I'm gonna do is take this cap off, service the anoid, take this cap off and service the relay piston. More later. See what it looks like with the cap off. This is the anoid. And uh, all we're gonna do with this is give it a good clean. Uh, inspect it, make sure it's still serviceable and then uh, put some light oil on it and uh, put it back in. Good afternoon again, as you can see we are now moving the, removing the CRM, camshaft rocker mechanism and this process at the moment involves stringing up the rocker arms. You can probably see just about a little bit of string, starting this end, running around underneath the rockers. This is to prevent the rocker arms from falling downwards when we lift the mechanism upwards. Otherwise they all fall down in fully angles and it's all very awkward and messy. And also, when you come to put it back on, you can't. So stringing up is the only method. Rolls-Royce recommend two methods, either with string or with rubber bands. We're using string on this occasion and it's as of endless fun. Thank you very much. Yeah. The DA is in there. Yeah. yeah. You use it, I do. Well gentlemen, as you can see, the block of, of block of doom has now been removed from the engine. It was a little recalcitrant, it has to be said. However, 
the combined talents of Mr Andrew Punt and Mr Dave Payne, Mr Bradley Winder and my uh, noisy self, did succeed in the end and it's here now ready for valve extraction. And Mr Bradley is now going to show you exactly where the dodgy valves are. It's that one, isn't it? That one over there. Not good at all. More later. So in order to confirm the condition of the valve seat in the cylinder head, we have the good valve here, which Bradley has very kindly blued the swept area on the seat. We're now going to insert this into the valve seat in the cylinder head and we'll rotate the valve. And we're going to see what sort of blue pattern it does. We're going to repeat this on both valve seats using this good valve in order to check that the valve seats in the cylinder head are okay or not. Hello again, Nev. As you can see, this is the valve that was causing the problem. You can see the wear here and how the valve was actually pulled up into the cylinder head, hence the ridge here of carbon. You compare that to the valve that was in the next valve seat and you can see the difference between the two. So, Bradley and I have done extensive bluing with Engineers Blue. Come up with this valve as a replacement and you can see where the valve seat sits on this. Very much more like its counterpart. So this is the valve that will be going in. So, as Bradley mentioned earlier, we've now fitted the valves. As you can see, there is a small snap ring located on a groove on this valve. We, we, for the purpose of this video, have not fitted it to this valve here. Why is it there? It's there to prevent the valve from falling into the cylinder in the event that the valve springs or the collets fail. If a valve spring breaks, you lose the tension on the collets here and they tend to come out, which would mean the valve would do this which if you would just allow it to proceed there, go like that, the valve would fall into the cylinder, get caught up with the piston, bang. You've now got a catastrophic failure in your engine. With the small circlip here fitted, it prevents the valve from falling into the engine. So you would now have an 11 cylinder Merlin, but it's better to have an 11 cylinder Merlin than no Merlin at all, because if that valve was to fall right into the cylinder, it would cause a catastrophic failure that would likely stop the engine dead. So as you can see, this is the engine with the bank removed. We're about to start the cleaning operation now of all the bits, the crankcase, mouths, etc., where the uh, block fits pistons etc then make sure all the ring gaps are in the right places and we shall then start a reassembly of the unit and it'll all be lovely installing bottom liner seal Definitely. Yeah. We wind, down, Dave. Yeah, wind them all the way up. I know. Put them down with the, the bolt. So we're about to start talking cylinder and bolts back up now. The blocks assembly's back on. You can see all the nuts. The washers have been refitted. So we shall now start with the torque wrench procedure. Firstly, we just nip them down.
Three. As you can now see, block assembly is now talked on, ready for peripheral ancillary components to be refitted to the outside of the engine, which I shall start now. As you can see, we're now fitting part of the inlet manifold trunking. There's two very large O-rings that fit inside here behind these tape and alloy washers and the uh, tension rings here. These have to be fitted very carefully uh, to make sure the O-ring seated properly and also you don't crack the alloy retainer while you're fitting it. Once this is in, however, things should be fairly plain sailing after that. <laughs> 